Hey fellow gardeners, Dawn here from Seasonal Designs. Today's video is not personally a happy one for me because unfortunately this beautiful pagoda dogwood tree you see behind me is on death's door essentially and we are going to need to remove it and replace this beautiful specimen. Now I'm going to give you a close-up of what's going on with this tree but it does have something called canker. And it typically starts with the wilting of the leaves. And then you're going to see where entire branches can die back. And that you can contain or you can, there's really no treatment for it, but you can remove those branches in the hopes of kind of slowing that process down a little bit. But once it gets it on the trunk of the tree, that really quite honestly is a death sentence. And we noticed the issue with the leaves um, just a few years ago and already a couple years later, and this tree has to go. As you guys know, we've got a garden tour coming up. So we wanna get this thing out. We wanna get a new specimen in, and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna plant underneath it. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit about this tree. We've had it for, oh gosh, a good, 12, 13 years, and it finally got to be the perfect shaped umbrella. I worked so hard to get beautiful lateral branching and not too heavy, just a nice airy kind of sun umbrella for our patio back there. So in the hottest part of the day, this tree gave us some shade right over our seating area. And a lot of it, I mean, is dying. Let me just kind of show you where I can grab what a normal leaf looks like right now. So this right here, this is a normal looking branch. This is the only branch on here that has decent looking leaves right now. Otherwise, all of the branches look like this, or they look like this one here, where the you can just see the foliage is just not doing well. And pretty much that's what the whole entire tree looks like. I mean, it's just the beginning of June. This is not going to look good for the garden tour in August. Here's the trunk. You can see that it too, I mean, it's just, it's not doing well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the mulch. There's a really nice layer of mulch under here. I'm going to take it and put it elsewhere in my garden. Look at that. I don't know this tree. Or is that the maple tree? It's gotta be this tree. Well, it does have some significant roots in here. Oh boy, some of these are big. This thing is going to be a monster to get out. So interesting thing, the place where we purchased the tree, landscaping, uh, actually a nursery, um, you have to leave the, the burlap on, the rope on, and the basket on. If you remove any of it, then your guarantee is gone. They don't guarantee the tree. That is different to me than I have ever done. I've always removed you know, maybe the handles of the basket, a little bit of the burlap and 
course, the string around the tree, you're supposed to leave all of that on. We've always removed that on our trees. Um, Well, as you can see behind me, the red bud is in and it looks beautiful. And this year I'm going to just underplant it with annuals because it's already almost the end of June. I need to get something in there that's gonna get going and it's gonna look good for the garden tour that's coming up the beginning of August. So annuals this year are my best bet. And if I really like the way it turned out, maybe I'll do annuals for a couple of years until I get tired of that and then maybe I'll think about what sort of perennial I might want to put under the tree. But let me show you what I'm using this year. This is Osteospermum called Bright Lights Yellow. And it is just a really pretty bright yellow color on it. I thought it would pair well with this Calibracoa. And this is called Bumblebee. It's a hot pink color and it has a pretty yellow center to tie into that yellow um, osteospermum I just showed you. Then I'm adding a white. This is compact white uh, lobularia. And I have a bunch of those. And then I'm also adding this sweet potato vine. This is sweet Carolyn, so it's not gonna get enormous, but it has that really pretty lime green color that I love. Well, you know, the first thing I do is I do like to lay everything out. And for this, there's a little bit of structure and then really the rest of it is just kind of filled in. So structure wise, I put the osteospermum in, um, in sort of a, a pattern around the tree and then everything else really I've just filled in. And you know, it's all gonna grow. I mean, everything's gonna spread a little bit. It's gonna be very loose. So once I lay everything out, it's then that I will come through and plant everything up. That is just so much better than I expected it would be. The tree, it turned out to be a really nice size. I love that here's my, I'm sitting on my patio that I can see through that tree, right? It's not super thick, it's not low, it's got a nice tall trunk, beautiful shape to it. And everything that I planted underneath, I think when that fills in is going to be so, so pretty. I mean, it looks kind of nice now, but now I am going to be putting fresh mulch down. So all of this will be covered with fresh mulch. You won't see the burlap won't be there, obviously, but I want to keep that around the root ball until I get the mulch on and that should be coming here um, tomorrow. Well, let's talk a little bit about the tree that uh, we put in. This is an Eastern redbud tree. And this tree's ideal growing zones would be zones four to nine. This tree can grow very well in full sun to part sun, but it is going to bloom best when it has full sun. Now this tree can grow 20 to 30 feet tall and just as wide, if not wider. 
And early on, when you have one of these, uh, you want to make sure that you're pruning so that you give it the kind of structure and shape that you want. Now the blooms on the, this tree is like one of the first, one of the earliest trees to bloom. And you know it when you see it because it gets these pink little tiny buds and then little flowers all along the branches of the tree. And I'm going to pop up a picture of what that looks like. This tree does well in uh, moist, well-draining soil. And it really doesn't have a lot of insect pest issues, but it, it is susceptible to two diseases. One of them is a uh, verticulum wilt, and the other one is a canker. And I'm not going to say it right, so I'm going to put the name up, but it's, it's Batrasoifia, and I may say that incorrectly, and I apologize. So those are two things that can affect the red bud. Now, what we have done here, because this tree really is in an open area right off the patio, excuse the mulching wheelbarrows back there. I just got done mulching here underneath the tree. This tree is facing, this really face southwest, and we can get some good winds. So it is really important that you stake your tree until it has a chance to establish itself. My husband has staked it. Um, it's not super tight, but it is going to give it some support should we get some significant winds. This thing already, <laughs> this first day it was planted, had to deal with some significant winds and a storm. Uh, but it still looks good. All the leaves are on and we are hopeful that this is going to be just absolutely beautiful when it blooms next year. Now the leaves on this tree, when they come out, they are tinged with a little bit of red and then they turn a really pretty deep dark green and they are almost heart shaped. So really pretty foliage on this tree. That is gonna be it for today's video. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, or when mother nature takes a tree, you gotta replace her. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.